Uh, let's talk about the new album. Welcome back, and it's an amazing piece of work. And I've, you know, I've given you many compliments throughout your time, but this is the first one I really genuinely meant. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, man. Black holes and revelations, and you should be really proud of it because it's a, it's a, it's a really epic body of work, and you've, you've outdone yourselves once again. Um, when did you start thinking about making, the, making this record? I mean, was it during the touring of, of Absolution, or was it? Did you give yourself a break afterwards? How did it work? Well, so there's, a little, there's a few songs hanging around, I guess, about just over a year ago mm. when we were touring the states. So I mean, you're always thinking about new songs, you know, when, mm. once you've like, been touring, been on the road for like 18 months, you just naturally start thinking about new music. So we were doing a few, mm. had a bit of time off, but really it was like last summer we were working on songs. Hungry to get back into it. I wondered how you were feeling at the end of that tour, because I mean, you played your biggest shows ever and probably did, you know, you did, you know, an atypical large amount of touring. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah it was pretty, pretty, pretty knackered towards the end, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, I think, I think we, you know, we wanted to take a big break. Uh, well, we, we ended up sort of using the whole break to make the album. You know, it took yeah. a long time to record about maybe <laughs> the longest recording process I've ever been. But, but I think, I think like a good two months of that was kind of half holiday, half yeah. making music. Just having fun, doing it. Yeah, yeah, and it's because we had, you know, it's the first time we had an album without any, any kind of uh, big schedule booked in front of us. So we kind of, we felt like we had all the time in the world, which we, we yeah. did, and we used most of it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, but, but towards the end of it, we sort of realised we had to kick, kick our asses into gear if we wanted to get if we wanted to get the album done in time to be able to play Reading. Yeah, yeah. Which was was obvious, so, yeah. so we, we, we booked Reading towards the end of last year, and that kind of kicked Ooh, up. Oh man, up. you're brave. <laughs> yeah, so that, right at that point, we're only halfway through the album, so we went. Scary right. though, isn't it? That's, that, that's put, put yourself in that situation, and I've yeah. seen it with bands where it's gone horribly wrong. You yeah, know, yeah. Where they booked themselves tours, and, and then you know, most famously, you two on that was it Pop Mart? Yeah. Yeah. They went out and booked all those dates, and then the album's not ready. It just all goes tits up, you know right. what I mean? So, and when you actually booked reading, did you feel like, okay, we're getting, this is going to be pressure, or this is going to be easy? We'll just at that moment, everything changed in the album making process. Until that time, we'd, we'd probably already spent a few months sort mm. of, you know, fighting around and trying new ideas and stuff. But at that point, it was like, right, let's make mm. decisions and mm. finish it off. We were in New York at that point, and that, that was that was one of the things that kind of kicked us into gear and mm. made us make decisions. We, we already had about 18 or 19 tracks, uh, the kind of backbone of the tracks. Some, some of them were fully recorded, some of them were just bits and pieces. And mm. but at that point, we kind of decided. To to really sort of hone in on, on the best kind of 10 yeah. or 11, you know? Do you think it worked for you in hindsight, the idea of actually doing a record, like you say, <coughs> without any kind of schedule pressure or any kind of that kind of stuff and, and having somebody go, hey, you've earned the right to take your time and make I think, it? I think it's good to write, write that way, you know, and, and sort of put the songs together that way. But I think sometimes when you're in the studio, it's good to have a bit of pressure, I think, because mm -hmm. otherwise you waste a, you know, cash. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why you, you guys, and maybe you have, haven't invested in your own space, you know? Uh, well, actually, I've, I've tried to get a place in Italy, a mm. studio. I actually bought it about a, a year ago. It's, it's, not, it's nothing too over the top, but it's just a place that I was building. But the builders in Italy are so slow yeah. that it was supposed to be finished by November last Italy, year. Pal. And, it, and, it's, <laughs> and we'll read the property later and we'll get yeah, this whole renovation. Exactly, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to sort of tie into the two <laughs> subjects there, you know. And, but it's supposed to be finished in time for us to do some recording there, but it's not done. So maybe, yeah, maybe I, but I'm pretty sure that, that if, you know, when we're going to do the next album, we'll be hopefully doing something in our own place, you know. That's the dream, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, at this point, you've done everything. You know, you've recorded in some of the most beautiful places in the world, and you've travelled and you've seen all of that. But ultimately, to have your own space, your own clubhouse, effectively, yeah, it's yeah. got to be part of the big, the, 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 the greater scheme. Yeah, lyrics, nice. lyrics. Do they come easy for you on this record? Um, I think when, when the music, uh, so some of the songs we we make, if you take the vocal off, you can hear there's like a sort of quite a, quite an atmosphere that we've created with the music that that kind of really inspired me to you know change some of the lyrics or inspired certain you know characters that I've got into, if you want to call it that. Um, so I'd say that when, when the music's good, the lyrics come very easily. You know, songs like Knights and uh, Take a Bow and mm. Soldier's Poem, these, these lyrics just came very, very quickly indeed. Mm. Um, Do you have to put yourself in, a, in an environment? Do you find that there are certain elements of, you know, the writing process that, that were better for you? Candles, incense, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think whenever you, whenever you kind of find yourself alone, but it wasn't your choice to be alone. Right. Which is not very often, but when yeah. it does happen, yeah, like, it's just writing comes extremely easily, I'd say. What about hangovers? I've always found that some of my best work <laughs> has been done with really bad hangovers. I mean, does that work for you? Uh, uh, it's not, not too great. I think, you know... That's pretty hard, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a fair few hangovers in France. <laughs> there's a fair few hangovers in France, and I think that probably led to us actually doing less work than we, than we should have. Yeah. Um, Let's but, talk uh, about France, because clearly, I mean, we touched on this the other day, you know, we, we, we hooked up and uh, you were saying that um, France began with, with earnest intentions of making an album, and ultimately you ended up de de deciphering mankind, um, the future, <laughs> and, and inevitably how you were going to survive on your own. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that experience, if you will. Yeah, well, it's you know, it the first time I've been cut off. Well, I went on a um, I went on a holiday to the Kingdom of Bhutan. And that was the first time I've ever kind of been outside of. Uh... Can I interrupt you just a second? Because I, cause last time I saw Matt properly was at the end of the Oz Court Show and, and it was the after party. And I was saying it was a little pre-Christmas, like say, you know, have a good holiday, everything else. Nice to see you. Well done, tour, and everything else. And you were really, you were like, what are you doing? I'm going to go to New Zealand. 
I go, that's great, great. New Zealand's great. I was like, what are you going to do in here? I'm going to get my jet pack and fly over the kingdom of Bhutan. <laughs> get in a yeah. submarine and go 50,000 leagues under the sea and go search for the most, you know, it's like, what? The well, runners. Yeah, in the end, I couldn't get the, the jet pack in, but, right. yeah, so, so I had to just go with a backpack you know, without, without, any, uh, without any propellers attached. But, right. And how was uh, Bhutan? Was it good? Uh, but it was good. But no, it, was, it was great to be, like, it's the first time I've ever really been away from, I suppose, you know, like, you know, what do you want to call it? Technology and mm. you know the West or whatever you want to call it, you know, mm. and, and and I kind of thought that'd be a nice type of environment to, to write and, and rehearse an album in. So we were looking for somewhere in, in the south of France um, that was uh, that was kind of very secluded, very private, somewhere where we could be very cut off mm. from everything. And mm. it was, uh, but in the end, that started to lead to extreme paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, who, I bought, you, who you out there with? I mean, who's rolling with you? You've got, you've got it's any... just us. Yeah, it was just us and Rich. That's mm. it. Yeah, yeah, mm. uh, and that was it. And some French guy called Patrice who <laughs> who, who cooked up some. Uh, Nice like snails pigeons. every now and again. Yeah, 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 the yeah, pigeons yeah. and snails and rabbits. It was real. It was keeping it real out there. So you disappeared down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Openness. And before you know, I, was, I bought this book called. Uh, I recommend it actually. A book called Dare to Prepare. Mm. You can buy it on the internet. It's mm. uh, and it sort of teaches you how to survive in the woods and all that kind of stuff. And I've been watching Ray Mears. You know, ever since ever since I come back from, that, I've been you know buying Ray Mears videos. I'm loving him though. He's great. yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah. Because but he, but he makes it. He makes it kind of uh, you know digestible for people <laughs> to, to watch him and yet not feel like the world is inevitably coming <laughs> to an end, which is what he's saying. Yeah, effectively, yeah. isn't it? I actually had a go at doing the fire thing where you get the, the sort of bent bit of wood and the string and you wrap it around, or you use a shoestring, wrap right. it around and you sort of spin the stick and I just, I just got frustrated for about two hours and went, I'll, I, I'm not going to be able to survive if <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm going to go sit in the middle of the street and <laughs> on my computer <laughs> with my juicer, <laughs> my toaster, my microwave oven. So you guys decided to move to New York, and that's another great place to go and create and, re and record as well. Um, and where did you record? In, in Manhattan, I take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We did some in Avatar Studios yeah. and Electric Ladyland. Nice. Hendrix's place, which yeah. is uh, quite magical. You know, it hasn't really changed since he left the place, really, and yeah. it's just got all the same. Like, vibe. Sorry. Discernible vibe, like yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Like the first thing since we got in there, the first thing like you do is like strap on a. A strap, 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 strap. <laughs> yeah, I started, I started, yeah, had to, yeah. got the like wild up pedal, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 just yeah. had to go there, but it's great. It hasn't changed. It's still got all the murals on the on the walls. Mm. It's actually really Something futuristic in there. You go in there, it looks like some kind of... It's maybe a spaceship, isn't it? It's maybe yeah, like a cockpit yeah, 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 It doesn't seem like it, because it hasn't changed since since he made it. Mm. And it, you know, it still feels futuristic even now. You know? Is it one of your favourite recording studios you've ever worked in? It's really, it's real high-end, actually. It's a point, you know, really sort of like, you know, you got... Going there was when we had like assistants and everything, and everything started to move really quickly, you yeah, know, the recording yeah. processes, like, because in New York you're paying like top dollar, you know, to record, so... And also just the nature of the city, man, it moves fast. And, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, I, I lived out there for three months, and a good two and a half months so that you know, I didn't work. I was mucking around, spending my savings, having a good time in New York. <laughs> but at the end of that, man, I was going brain dead because you can't stand still there. Yeah, yeah. You got, the yeah. Street, you <laughs> it's insane, it's yeah. And it's this place where you can really mix working hard and playing hard, like mm. Which really hard. You guys do hard. very well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah, no, no, but that was uh, that was it was nice to. Rec we've never made an album in that kind of way before. You know, like really mixing up, going out and having a good time with working. And it, it, they do kind of complement each other sometimes. You know, and it's, uh, yeah. And I think that we kind of realised that after being in France, where you know there's nothing to do. Apart, yeah, talk apart about from extremes. Try to build a fire. And, <laughs> Put a cab in the land. Yeah. Mm. Um, did you open the door, you know, for guests and mates and people that come in and have a listen? I mean, were there any musicians that, you know, that, that, that were, because it's, it's a place to create. Did you sort of say, come down, have a listen, or, you know, did you think about anyone guests? Bowie came in. Yeah, Bowie came in. <laughs> See, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, 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 I thought you were looking for yeah, 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 Give yeah. us 60 seconds on that experience, please. <laughs> yeah, Rich Costi was... Uh, was kind of having a few phone conversations with Bowie about possibly working on an album with him, but and Bowie said, I don't mind coming down and listening to what we're working on to see, see if he's into it, and came in, and uh, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty nerve-wracking to meet him. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Right. So uh, you, he, were the, you were the demo tape, effectively, for Costly to go on. Yeah, right, yeah. That's pretty intimidating. Yeah, I think, I think Rich was probably the most nervous, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's a bit embarrassing, really, because we tried to play him a song, and it just wasn't ready, and I think we're just oh, like, yeah, working yeah, we, on like, the take a bow, actually, yeah. Yeah, take yeah, a bow, yeah. and it, like, it wasn't there at all. Yeah, it was like... Attempted to like knock it up on the board, and it was like... Oh yeah, it just sounded God. rough. Yeah, it's like <laughs> no, no, we played him Invincible though, and, uh, and that was that track was inspired by probably some of his early stuff, and yeah. I think uh, he, li he liked that one a lot. Um, the first thing he said when we walked in was last time he was in that studio was recording Fame with John Lennon, you know, and, and that was on the day of the um, it was it the fiftieth birthday anniversary or something of John Lennon, I think it was. Wow. That was a pretty poignant moment, you know. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. And anything else to talk, to talk about in terms of the album? I mean, let's get to the artwork stage and, and, and choosing a title and things like that, because these are things which a lot of your fans connect themselves to. Um, it's not just, you know, you don't just come out and throw a record out with, you know, some kind of random blank album cover, you know, the artwork and everything's very important. So at what point did you start thinking about that? Uh, a little bit late in the day, maybe. Yeah, no, we, we, <laughs> been thinking
but we went to Storm, basically Storm mm. Ferguson. We sat, we, he came along, he came along, listened to some music whilst we were making it, and then we sent him the finished thing as well. Mm. And he, he kind of came up with this idea based on the Knights of Sidonia kind of thing, the, the last track on the album, kind of set in Mars with the mm. four horsemen of the apocalypse, mm. kind of sat around all wearing these different suits which represent different ailments of mankind, and, and the idea is they've kind of outgrown their horses, you know, because like you know the ailments are so big, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, but it's you know it's, it's kind of out there. It's, it's like mix, it's a mixture of sort of bit of reality and fantasy, and I think that kind of fits quite well with the music. Mm. So getting back to uh, to going on stage and performing live, because uh, I'm going to wrap through these because we've got questions from the from, from your fans, and I'm, I want to ask every single one of them. Um, so getting back and performing and performing live and getting these songs ready to go, and um, you, you know you throw a lot of production into your, into your albums. So when it comes down to <coughs> actually recreating them live, I mean, you know, it must be quite a challenge at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's We've tough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, making this album was the. We never, we didn't have any consideration for for how we we're going to play them live. I think that was one of the things that gave us the freedom to experiment, you know. Because I think mm. for the last album, Absolution, we, we were quite keen to make something that captured us as a live band and also mm. something we knew would work very well live. Mm. And it, uh, but I think, uh, so, you know, after because you know, it's after our third album, we thought we felt we felt that might be a hindrance to sort of just try and do something exactly that we know we can do live. So, yeah. so songs like you know, Supermassive, Take a Bow, these these things are kind of have had, we've had to kind of really rethink how we play live on on, on those songs anyway. And, are you going to uh, use pads like drum pads and stuff to try and create the drum loop on Supermassive Black Hole? Is that how you're going to kind of do that? Triggers and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, and um, vocoders have, have, have featured because we've done yeah, a lot so. of kind of big layered backing vocals. So, yeah. So live, we've had to get the vocoder in, and, uh, what and, about and also a bloke, another bloke. Oh yeah, you brought someone else. <laughs> in. Who is this guy? Uh, it's, well, it's actually the guy it's we played Morgan. with, yeah, Morgan from Nichols the yeah, from the street. Yeah, he yeah. filled in when uh, when Chris couldn't do it, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and we got to know him through that, and then but it turns out he was a keyboard player. Whenever when because he, he he stayed on the road with us for a while. When Chris when Chris's wrist got better again, he he stayed just in case Chris couldn't. Oh, that must have been comfortable. Yeah. Chris and, uh, gets back on the bus and he's like, so I'm here and what's he still doing here? <laughs> and, uh, and Chris was playing with his cast on. I think right. we were actually talking Australia, weren't we? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and Chris was playing, but Morgan was kind of yeah. hanging around not doing anything and he, and he kept trying to sort of play the keys and get involved on the keys and we were going, yeah, come on, we're not quite ready for that yet. But, um, but, you know, I love but, it, was he really? I love the fact that this guy is actually sitting there going, you know what, I'm just gonna, if I can just muscle it in quietly, maybe, maybe they'll forget that I'm still here after five years. That's yeah, so, so that's kind of how it started really, but I mean, he's, you know, he won't be playing on every song, but I mean, but so, so, He's in, he's in the camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly a few of the new tracks. Um, he's doing a lot of synth work as well, and like messing around with all the arpeggios mm, and mm. doing it live. You know? yeah. Can you dress him up like a phantom or something? Or yeah, like we did say part part of the job job description is that you know we can dress him up any way we please. You know, so. <laughs> you should bring him up halfway through on like wires and lower him down. Like this. <laughs> I think we should push it, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, man, he's landed on his feet, too. I mean, that guy's, you know, he's into one of the best live, you know, recorded bands, you know, ever, you know, and you know that, and that's, man, what a, what a, what a role for that dude, seriously. <laughs> like, how many albums to choose now? You've got four original albums to choose from, and you've, you know, you could play Springsteenian style shows if you want to, because I know you love playing live, mm. um, but it's, it's, you're still going to have to leave ones out. What be, tracks you mean? Yeah, yeah. It's I think pretty that, tough, isn't it? I think we'll try and mix. Out. I think we'll try and mix it up a bit on the next tour. I mean, I think we'll bring you know some, some of the older tracks we're playing. will change up. You know, mm. we're, we're gonna stick with the same ones every time that we've been doing over the last tour. So mm. I think we'll bring up a couple of a couple of different ones back. All mine's playing Showbiz again. Maybe yeah, I've yeah, yeah, played that for a while. I wondered Feeling about songs. So, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. I wondered about songs off the first album and stuff like that, and whether whether or not you know you still got the same kick out of playing Sunburn and things like that. You know? Yeah, we played Sunburn and Must Museum for a long time. Yeah. And I, I think maybe maybe we'll look for play a couple of different ones off the first album. Mm. Mm. So we did a gig in Milan and we didn't play a single song for the first time. Yeah, we got a jit from it on the message board. So. Yeah. <laughs> but your fans as well, I mean, they're so passionate about your music that you can't win. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. someone's going to leave disappointed, you know what I mean? Is there a particular favourite from the back catalogue that you know when it kicks in, you always... I mean, I know I always like hearing you play Stockholm Syndrome, but I'm... Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll always... Yeah, that, that's, that's always, always a live favourite, that one, yeah. yeah mm. I think that'll always be in there. Um, well, so I am not bringing Feeling Good back, because that was always a good live track. It was actually a cover song, but, mm. um, you know, that always went down pretty well, so I am not bringing that back into the set. Yeah. Still no one intended, though. Still not gonna, you're still not going to do it, I, are you, mate? You're never gonna no, do I it. think I might. Uh, you know, I think, I think with the vocoders, I was thinking you of doing like a really sort of re weird, weird alternative version. You, you can know, rearrange maybe. that and do something yeah. really interesting with that, you know what I mean? Mm. Maybe I could come along and just hang out in the background and <laughs> just like muck around with it a little bit. I mean, it worked for the other dude, you know what I mean? It's like, no. You guys <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you guys want to tour on this record? I mean, I know you tour hard. Do you want to see the world again? You know, go around Oh, yeah, always. You know, we've already got like a couple of years on yeah. paper yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. But there's still so Someone's many. Going, Whoa. Yeah, totally. There's still, still so many great places to see that we haven't been to. South America, and have been mm. there. We're going to be somehow. We got like a we got a platinum album in Indonesia last time. So nice. we need to go like do a gig over there, and probably some more gigs in like Southeast Asia as it well. It is such so. Spinal Tap, isn't it? Someone
Let's get some questions from the planet for you, because um, we're going to be talking videos pretty soon, going through your, your, your videography as well, which I'm going to be hosting, wow. which is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, okay, this one's from uh, Malali. Supermassive black holes, fantastic. Uh, <coughs> but do you deliberately write innuendos in your songs, or do they just happen? And making references to uh, Cave, Forced In, Sober, Hate This, and the list goes on. Uh, you know, it happens accidentally, but you know. You, you crack know, yourself uh, up sometimes when you yeah, write I mean, Yeah, I you mean, know, supermassive black hole. I mean, the first treatment we got for that yeah. was a load of large ladies. Um, <laughs> oh, that's inspired! Yeah, the, the first treatment was a load of large ladies sort of booging on down, you know, and it was supposed to be a whole, like, large... I, I don't use, I'm trying to be polite, large ladies. Video. Yeah, I mean, the connection's um, there. It's yeah, okay. yeah, you know, and further. Supermassive Black Hole, I thought that was pretty uh, risky to that's do pretty it, funny. To make that's a video pretty like funny. that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't actually... Uh, it wasn't necessarily intended to be that way, but, of course, the song was it does have a sort of... Mm. There was a bit of talking about relationships in some way, so, yeah, you could mm. easily draw an innuendo if you wanted to, yeah, but it wasn't intended, though. You must have had fun recording that as well, getting in the falsetto in and having... Because it's... it's, it's there's a, there's a boogie. Yeah, so yeah. I've you know. always wanted to do a track in falsetto that doesn't sound like Ponzi. Yeah. <laughs> so Prince, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, one the, of the, the only ones who can. Yeah, it doesn't sound operatic. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, uh, we did a song called Microcuts that was all falsetto on the second album, which is a good track, but it sounds very, yeah. very kind of operatic, you know. Um, so I wanted to do something that, that uses that kind of range of vocal, but it's, which is more fun or mm. not, not taking itself too seriously. Were you self-conscious when you were laying down the guide vocal of it and stuff like that? <laughs> the guys in the studio like, <laughs> I was, I was, I'll be honest, I had to do it on my own. Right, uh, I, yeah, I, was I, actually, I was actually on my own. I, you know, I, couldn't, uh, I was a bit embarrassed to do it in front of anyone. So I, sort yeah. of, I had to spend a few, uh, like, a few hours on my own sort of trying that one out. And how just, are you? How are you? Because you've got, I mean, you, you poker face sucks, man. I mean, look at you right now. You're a terrible smirker. How <laughs> were you when you heard it? Were you like, that's great, man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I certainly didn't doubt it. I thought it was cool, you know? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think we were all just so excited how different it sounds for, yeah. for Muse and our band to do something like that and so different than what we used to so when I heard it I was like This one from Sneebs. Uh, have every of you ever been shocked, confused, or bemused by things that fans have written on your message board? I mean, I don't know if you read them or not. <laughs> but but quite, quite a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite. Uh, mm. It's quite. I, I don't. I don't spend too much time on there. Um, but yeah, when I do read it, you find yourself sort of reading like these long, deep discussions about my haircut. <laughs> it's like. Exactly, it's yeah. like you know, before you know, it, you're sort of going on. I've lost it. Here. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, it's sort of. Uh, you can get riddled with uh, self doubt and syphilis if you spend too much time. <laughs> and, how much, and how much do you spend on your hair? Yeah. Um, uh, me, not much at all, actually. In fact, I need to get it cut. In fact, we've got, we've got some guy coming to meet us at this Jonathan Ross thing later on to uh, cut my hair, but I don't think it'll cost much, about 50 quid. Or yeah, something. right. You know the way these guys work with, man. Look <laughs> at them. Let's collaborate. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going to be like, you know, Isaac Mizrahi or someone. <laughs> yeah. All right, this one from Randy Poirot. Is it true that you wouldn't let Nescafe use your song on an advert? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. We actually had a legal battle with them. Really? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, wanna, how do you go to court with someone because you... What rights do they have? To take you to well, court? we said well, no, but then I yeah, when they, they don't played it anyway. Yeah, yeah. They, that's it's certain territories like I mean, like England and America, you have to ask permission to the artist if you want to use it. Yeah. Yeah, there's some, like there's looser places out there like Italy where you know people can just use whatever they want in adverts. But yeah. but over here, if they use something without asking, then uh, then uh, you know they've made a mistake basically because that's what they did. They actually released it and it went out. What like, song was, was it? Feeling good. Uh, feeling good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which uh, is a cover song, but you know because it's because it's our recording that they used, and uh, and you won. Yeah, we won. We won 50 grand and we gave, so it, we gave it all to charity. So. Good, good for yeah. you. Have you seen, like you say, in Italy or any other places around the world, your music being used in like ads or promos that's made you laugh? Do you know what I mean? Uh, there's, there's, there's a couple of suspicious perfume adverts in Italy that I've seen. <laughs> that, and I, I, I don't like I the way they keep... surprise me. They keep, getting, yeah, they keep getting used to perfume and I find that a bit on the edge, you know. In fact, in fact it was actually microcuts. <laughs> was it? Yeah, the, with, 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 maybe that was what got, got made me paranoid about the, uh, the falsetto. <laughs> this one from Raymond Dam. Um, well, I want to know what the live shows will be like this year, but I'm sure you're still working that out as you go, you know what I mean? You, know, you say you're sort of doing it last minute right now, but um, I can't wait to see how you top your Dalek Doctor Who piano. Oh, right. Is, uh, that, is that going to be there still? Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually going a bit more traditional. I'm getting, I've got a white piano coming yeah. in, but, but it's kind of like we can project onto it because okay. it's all white, so we can have video on the piano. Um, cool. but, but also the set's going to be quite white, including <clears> I think we're going to be quite white. Great. Uh, so, we, so you can project on the body. So we've got, we've got these kind of moving projectors. Wicked. That, that you can sort of, so we, we can come out and we've got these projectors that can film infrared mm. and, f and, and project at the same time, so you can like, we can come out in the pitch darkness and, and you can just see like projections of us in infrared. That's rad. Shuffling ourselves. around. That yeah. is rad. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. All right, this one from Butter Canes and Hurraflies, probably my favorite fan of yours and also my favorite question. Uh, if you were to wake up and find the other two band members were in fact female, 
<laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll direct this in that. That's okay. <laughs> then which one would you most fancy and why? <laughs> oh, of course. That's, that's, just, strange, isn't it? that's just a bit well, strong. Well, do you want to help you out? Slow I mean, it's a, bit, I mean it's a bit too early for that. <laughs> you know? Chris, is, Chris, is, Chris is, you know, he's the bigger lady. You know, wait, he's, wait, the, wait. He's, he's got shoulders. Oh, God. There's nothing wrong with that. If they look like that, there's no chance. You know what I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if, he comes, if he's wearing that silver jacket, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. No, I mean, they'd have to, you know, they'd have to be, uh, you know, have a slightly better, better haircut, I'd say. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but no, it's a bit strong for me this, this time in the morning. Can I think. He turns you like that. Crazy. <laughs> no, if he was a girl. If he was a girl, right? A girl, yeah. But their haircut could. I like girls with long hair. You know, but look, could look, look quite good on it. You know, it's kind of got that kind of indie androgynous <laughs> vibe going on. I'm seeing it. You just don't do that for them. This one from Tag You're It. Oh, I'm not going to go into that. That's a <laughs> Pete Doherty thing. Apparently, he described you as mediocre at Enemy Awards. Did you ever hear about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pete, Pete Doherty said that. Yes, which is like, <laughs> exactly, right? Okay, uh, Bionic Bunny. Shame. Matt, apart from saying the alphabet backwards, can you do that? Yeah, I can, yeah. yeah. I haven't done it for a while. Don't you? Oh, God. Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's bananas. Oh, come on. No, no, I'm serious. I can't do that. I can't get past That's the only thing I can take backwards, though. It's like, you know, it's, I don't know why I learned that. Some, you know, some tried to impress someone in school when I was five. <laughs> right. <or something>. yeah. <laughs> what scares me is that this person knows you can do it. Uh, <laughs> any other hidden talents within the band? Anyone else? Any other party tricks? Oh, blimey, party tricks. Well, yeah, Not this time I've seen morning, a few, though. but they mainly involve <laughs> alcohol. But, uh, yeah. All right, this is from 1943, Spitfire. Um, the piano interludes in the live shows. Have there any plans to release, you know, you know, an EP primarily using that as the main instrument? Um, I know it featured heavily on Absolution, but there's the the piano thing is kind of is is taken a step back on this album. I think I think it's one of the things that helped make the maybe it's being an electric lady because mm. all the songs on the album are kind of guitar based, mm. all songs that are written from the guitar. Um, and there was a few piano tracks which were really sort of you know like the piano solo in the middle of Butterflies and Hurricanes. Mm. They, they they kind of all sound like that, but mm. like for five minutes or ten <laughs> minutes. Um, um, but with and, and like you know, Dom was all getting a bit kind of into his timpani, and it was, it was all just going really, really kind of full on mm. classical. And I think I think that you know we could potentially do uh, something, you know, a whole, either a whole record or, or it's a definitely an extended piece mm. that was. And I think we definitely will do something like that one day. What I love um, is seeing you guys live in a place like Earl's Court and seeing like you know whatever twenty thousand people, and you know they're all rocking out and moshing and going hard. <laughs> and it's a rock show, and then you break into this like five minute piano, <laughs> and these kids are like, <laughs> <laughs> just like when did opera become cool, man? <laughs> but it's rad, you know. You turn it around and they dig it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's I, I think fine. Uh, yeah, I think we could do something based around that one day. I mean, whether or not it could be the basis of a whole album, I think um, it could definitely be like, yeah, an EP, mm. EP or something. Yeah. And there was a string quartet tribute to your music as well, wasn't there, that was released? Yeah, there was, yeah. Did yeah, you no, hear was, that? Yeah, yeah, I heard bits of it. Yeah, it was yeah, nice. it was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. It was in Holland or Belgium or something. Yeah, it was in Europe. So yeah, yeah. Someone kind of pulled it in. Yeah, it was good. You're yeah. not feeling it? Yeah, it was all right. I haven't heard it. Right. To well, be honest. No, it was all right. Now, I saw this. There's this group called Apocalyptica. You should check them out. Apocalyptica, who okay. like, who do like, there's like four cello players, and they do like Metallica covers, and it's right. like full on. Right. It's like they put distortion pedals on. They're all like moshing with long hair hanging down like this, oh, and it's like. I think I've seen that. I've seen that. It's like the peak of kind of cool and embarrassment. At the same time, it is, and as you said, it is a very very fine line. Uh, <laughs> we got time for one more. Now nah, let's wrap it up, man. Let's go down and talk about some videos. <laughs> okay, it's good to cool. see you, man. Thanks for coming in. Cheers. Yeah, thanks nice for having us.